Hey guys, Desolator Magic. I still sound like crap because I'm still getting over the flu, except I'm all the way better. I'm just waiting for everything to clear up. I tried spicy food. I tried Dayquil. Ooh, I actually have some Sudafed. Be right back. Well, I was going to cook some meth for dinner, but I guess now I got to just clear out my sinuses and lungs and throat and everything else. Anyway, like I promised in the last video, I have a killer deck. This is the polar opposite of what I just built. And from what I've seen by playing on X-Mage pretty much all day, uh, this is what everybody else built. So there's either suicidal combos that went on turn four or five, just stupidly overpowered, infinite combos, just crushing like five, six, seven card combos because draw and scry and improvise and everything are completely out of control. The open-ended triggers are completely out of control. The ETB is completely out of control. Everything's a joke in Aether Revolt. It's literally a pile of garbage. It is an unplayable set. Uh, so I built the most offensive thing I've seen yet. This egregious, just disgrace, just slap in the face to normal magic. Um, I would say it won about 80% of the games today, and I played a lot of games today against nothing but humans. I saw some crazy crap, and I, I basically saw nothing but horribly unfair decks, uh, but that's when I'm running, and I just outsped them, just simply faster. So, um, the other deck I saw was just oppressive levels of control. Just like, you can't do anything. I don't care if your spells cost one. I don't care if your spells cost zero, because that's what people are playing. Uh, you can't do crap, okay? All your stuff's back to hand. Everything's in the graveyard. Everything's countered. Oh, look, I'm out of cards. Now I've got 19 more, and I'm going to resurrect my counter spells from the graveyard. You know, that level of crap. So those are the two deck archetypes. Um, now think about this for a second. Horribly unfair combos. Just OP decks. Just stupid, stupid, stupid powerful decks uh, that went on turn four. Or unplayable, like you cannot play against this, levels of control. And God help you if it's a mirror match. Um... Unfortunately, the control seems to be winning, uh, which is weird because my control version super bounce didn't quite work, but that's because obviously ETB and, you know, people spamming spells that don't cost much. It wasn't really intended to be a terribly good deck. It was just a net deck assassin. So I thought, uh, you know, it, it worked. It doesn't really match my local meta anyway. Um, I'm going to build something better. And holy crap, is this deck powerful. I basically gave the entire deck list in another video, and you can actually tweak this a little bit, but the core components are pretty obvious. I think I've got the math down pretty well too, although I keep getting uh, colors screwed in about 1 in 15 games, uh, which I feel like is too much. I mean, that's enough to win FNM, but I don't know, <laughs> whatever, there's, I don't think there's more fixing in the game. So this deck is relatively cheap to build. Um, right now it's probably sitting, uh, depending upon how you build it, at about 60, 70 bucks, so I mean, it's not great. Um, actually, you know, it might be like 50. Okay, upon further consideration, it might be like, uh, 90 even. Um, but you can kick out two of the cards and make it completely affordable. Also, there's, uh, four more cards you can swap out that make it practically free. So, um, that would put it down to like 25 bucks. So yeah, feel free to build this. So this deck is called Candy Cane Vehicles. Um, it is running five planes and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mountains at the moment. Um, then obviously four Needle Spires and four Inspiring Vantages. Now the Inspiring Vantages, last I checked, are pretty expensive. Um, I don't know, you might be able to get them for lower now. I'm pretty sure there's one that just comes into battle, or the battlefield tapped, and you could replace all eight of them, honestly. Oh, probably not all eight with that one, that would be illegal. But, um, you get the idea. I mean, you guys know mana bases, how to trim them down, make them cheaper. Not a big deal. Just run, like, Evolving Wilds is practically the same damn card. Actually, that would almost be more appropriate than Inspiring Vantage, but uh, with Inspiring Vantage, you get the fast land, and that's the win on turn four part. So, if anything, don't pull those. Needle Spire is completely unnecessary. So, that's the mana base, thus the Candy Cane um, name. Anybody calling it Boros? Um, there's not one single Boros-related card in here, actually. So, um, yeah, common mistake. A lot of people make it, but um, don't call it that. So this is vehicles, and it's um, self-driving vehicles, which is almost the name of the uh, deck, except didn't think people would uh, land on it correctly in YouTube, basically. They're not the right type of people, I should say. So first up, we got um, Consulate Dreadnought, obviously, four of, duh. Um, I mean, it, like, why would you not throw this in? 
Then we got Cultivator's Caravan. It literally taps for any color mana and is a vehicle and can tap without being crewed. I mean, that's just messed up. Uh, then Peace Walker Colossus. 6-6 six, six for 3 and he can crew another vehicle. Obviously include Aether Sphere Harvester. There's your lifelink. There's your flyer. And it's got decent power with insane toughness and it only costs 3. Uh, then we've also got two sky skiffs um you know they're a two three for two i just put them in because they cost two and then two heart of kirin's so uh between the sky skiff and the heart of kirin should you be running for a heart of kirin's probably can you get away with four sky skiffs and zero heart of kirin's considering they're 20 bucks a piece probably i mean the four four in vigilance compared to two three and nothing and they're both flying I mean, one costs, you know, three to crew and one costs one to crew, but this deck doesn't crew anything. There is something to be said for crewing the Sky Skiff um, for one, um, but it's, I don't know, you, you basically would crew it for two in the deck, so it's, I don't know. If you were to run four Sky Skiffs, it won't be a disaster, but you're losing two attack power, which could literally add an entire turn to the game. That is dangerous. So um, the other problem, though, is this deck draws tons of cards. Uh, do you want to end up with two Heart of Kirins because that's a dead card? No, absolutely not. So I went 2-2. Personally, I only own one copy of Heart of Kirin, so I'm probably going to go 3-1 until I can trade for one. So do we have the 3-1, you know, pilot? What kind of dwarves do we put in? Oh, hell no. No, that's... I'm sorry. That's not how vehicles work anymore. Um, you thought you knew how vehicles work. And then Wizards of the Coast said, screw you, idiot. You don't know how vehicles work. Here's how vehicles work. Siege modification. Enchant creature, keep that in mind, or vehicle. And it gets plus three and first strike. And if it's a vehicle, it's crewed forever, sort of. It's turned into a creature. But if you then, in addition to that crew, it, it does nothing. So plus three and first strike on the console of Dreadnought. There's your 10-11 first striker swinging on turn three because you got it out on turn one or two and it doesn't have summoning sickness. I've done it. The person forfeited. I'm not even kidding. He had a creature on the field and he forfeited. That's a table flip level forfeit. You don't just forfeit because, oh, let's save some time on turn three. No, you forfeit because you're pissed off. I don't blame him. This deck is an atrocity. I feel ashamed playing it, but... Welcome to A3 Vault. I hate it. It's garbage. Everything's overpowered. And you fight fire with fire. Boy, so I sure hope I get Siege Modification out or the deck falls apart, right? Aerial Modification. <laughs> Same thing. Enchant Creature Vehicle. It'll auto-crew. And then it gets plus two, plus two in uh, f flying. Not frying. Flying. Creature or Vehicle. I mean, <sighs> look at the artwork. What about that as a creature? It's clearly meant to auto-crew. Oh my god. That is your emergency backup, is dropping one of these onto a creature. Do not forget that you can do it. So eight cards, I mean, that's a 78% chance of showing up in your opening hand in at least one copy. Not quite good enough, right? Um, open the armory, three copies. Search your library for an aura or equipment, which there is none. Uh, reveal it, then put it in your hand, then shuffle for two. Uh, it's a sorcery, but, I mean, whatever. That's pretty much when you would cast it. So, considering that those go get the aerial modification or siege modification, your choice, um, basically you've got four plus four plus three copies of it. So your auto crewer, you're going to get it out. That's somewhere up in the 90-95% range of uh, showing up in a given game. And on the level of draw that you can get to in the ramp, I mean, it, you're going to get one. Oh, did you not pick one up and your deck's falling apart? Remember Peace Walker Colossus? Uh, pay two. Target it. Uh, or yeah, you basically target a vehicle and then it becomes a creature. There you go. Two of these can target each other. They are not legendary. Whoops. So that's 15 cards that'll crew a vehicle, and uh, I actually didn't count the number of vehicles. Okay, there are 20 total vehicles in this deck, and 15 ways to auto-crew them. <laughs> yeah, consistency, trust me. Unless you start with a horrific hand that you should have mulliganed, you're probably going to win. There are a ton of reasonable hand combinations, I would say 20% of the time, roughly, uh, that will just win you the game on turn four. Or, or five. You'd actually have to include five to get that high. Otherwise, it would have to be the Dreadnought. So as a late game chump blocker, emergency chump blocker, and a way to just get mana, because you really got to get to five if you start with aerial modification or if you need to fetch it to fly over something, we got three copies of Hedron Crawler. I mean, it's an artifact. 
Uh, not that relevant to the deck, so you know you could replace it with almost anything. It doesn't matter. It's a zero one, whatever. Um, if you were to drop aerial mod on it, it's a two three, and if you were to drop siege mod on it, it's a three one first striker. It's just it's not good, but it gives you one free mana, and that's huge. The only problem is summoning sickness. You got to wait a turn on it, and he doesn't trigger uh, anything else in the deck, and he can't crew anything. So. You could replace him with the 2-3 Werewolf that every time it attacks during your next main phase, you gain one red, but you're probably going to get him killed. He does flip, though, which is kind of cool. So, I mean, if you want to try it, you can go for it. Otherwise, um, I mean, you could try, like, Corrupt Grafstone. I don't think that'll work because this deck just puts nothing into the graveyard. I'm sure there's some other thing I forgot. I know Prophetic Prism won't work, but um, I don't know. There, there's other artifacts to tap for mana, I'm sure. I just went with Hedron because, like I said, chump blocker. And emergency, you know, I could drop a siege mod onto him. 3-1 first strike isn't, you know, nothing. So what else do we got? I mean, we're almost out of card slots, right? Sram, Cedar, Edificer, one of the most broken cards and blatant Hellboy ripoffs I've ever seen. I know Hellboy wasn't a dwarf. He was quite literally the opposite. Shut up. So he costs two and he's a 2-2. Two, two. He can crew a couple of the things in the deck, um, which is nice. And if you were to drop any of the modifications on him, he's... Uh, not that bad. I mean, a 5-2 first striker. That's not bad. Or a 4-4 flyer. It's doable. It can be an attack to turn to case of emergency. It's a great backup plan. But whenever you cast... Oh, here we go. An aura or a vehicle spell. I'm going to leave out equipment because it's not in there. Draw a card. So, I mean, what is that? That's like 31 cards in the deck or something like that <laughs> would result in you drawing a card. I, I absolutely hate that he's legendary, but I put four of because... He's just that important. I mean, he really, really, really is. If you drop out a vehicle, then bring out another vehicle, um, you can use the uh, Cultivator's Caravan to tap for mana the turn that you brought it out and summon even more crap. I mean, I've put out five, six vehicles in the same turn. So if I'm not mistaken, that is it. Um, it just screams consistency because it just really does one thing. It just runs you over with giant boosted vehicles. Now I notice there's one thing this dies to, and it's just massive amounts of removal. Like, the person would have to be running 10 plus easily, and unfortunately a lot of decks are. Like I said, it's psychotic levels of control in every color, and that's another thing Wizards messed up. They put, like, really good removal in every single color. I mean, white has Fragmentize and Stasis Snare. Um, blue has all of those ice clones, the uh, icy whatever and the icy whatever the hell else. It can also bounce stuff back to hand by target or by um, mass. Black has kill spells, duh. Red has a um, whole bunch of, you know, destruction. They've got unlicensed disintegration when you mix it. I mean, they've got artifact destruction. They've got it. Oh, yeah, green. Green actually has, like, force fight and a couple, like, legit removals, like uh, artifact destruction. So if all five colors have it and people are playing three colors... If they don't get you the first time, they'll get you with the sideboard, and that's a real shame. Nobody likes playing against that level of control, but then again, a healthy deck probably has, you know, 8 to 10 control cards in it. So it's not that surprising, it's just that every color has it, everyone's doing it, and it's in every deck. It's so annoying. In fact, take a guess what's in the sideboard. It's basically just removal. I mean, I didn't even make a sideboard yet, but it, in my head, it's removal. It's red-white removal. It's stasis snare and a bunch of other dirt cheap, maybe harness lightning. So yeah, anybody with a good enough amount of removal automatically gets a two-for-one special on your creature. So, I mean, one fatal push, they just took out a vehicle and an aura. Now, you can easily bait someone into crewing it with, you know, SRAM or something like that and just flying at them. And they're like, oh, no, I'm allergic to damage. It's a sky skiff. Oh, my God, I can't take two damage. And they remove it before you even get the uh, aura on it. That is good old-fashioned stupid right there. You can also use uh, Peace Walker Colossus to crew anything. I mean, you could crew the damn Consulate Dreadnought Swing for seven if you think they might have a removal, and uh, they'll probably be baited into removing it, and then you just get out another artifact, especially with the SRAM draw, and, um, you know, put an aura on that. Just wait for them to go low on cards or be tapped out. And it kind of seems like everything blows this deck up because I think they knew that artifacts and vehicles were going to be powerful. Like, even Nahiri, she just sh shreds this deck, just destroys it. You get one swing, that's it, and a damn well better be at her, but unfortunately people are probably going to do something to screw with you before you even hit her. Or they'll bring her out after you swung, they'll take the damage, take the 10 hit, and then they'll destroy it and you got to start all over. The, the good thing is, though, this is reloadable. I mean, like I said, 15 ways to crew in 20 vehicles, yeah, that's reloadable. I mean, they blow up one, you're just going to bring two more. I mean, that's just how it works. 
This deck very, very rarely stalls out with just top deck and garbage. I mean, it, it just works. The more ramp you pull, the more cards you pull once you get SRAM out, and you just dominate the board state. I might throw like eight copies of a pilot in the sideboard too, just to naturally crew stuff so that they have to destroy one or the other, and they need twice the amount of removal. And I think that would work. I mean, like crew six is ridiculous for Consulate Dreadnought. You're never going to get there, but uh, some of the other ones are doable. So the only question is, is this deck good? Does it work? Well, yes. I mean, I won the vast majority of my games against just the wildest crap, all different colors, all different strategies. I don't think I even played against the same deck strategy twice, um, which is surprising, but then again, it's before the tournament. So yeah, I guess. But just in general against everything, this one, I mean, once in a while, somebody was running just too much damn removal and then... I just couldn't get the draws later, or they were outdrawing me. Like, they were using Improvise to draw three. They're honestly just going to have to ban that card. Um, and and then I just lost, because they, they would pull more draw, or they'd pull more removal, and there was nothing I could do, because they could just outdraw me. And that's after they shut down everything I had on the field. So, um, this deck is a little sensitive to removal and disruption, but it's not a complete glass cannon. And the fact that it wins on turn four, they better start with something flawless, I mean, if, if they're going to stop you on turn three with a 10-11 and then turn four as well, oh my god, like, they, they better have some serious removal and the perfect mana base and everything, or they're dead. So I fear what people would sideboard in to stop this, um, but I might just outsideboard them, you know, change it up a little bit, take out some auras, put in some pilots, whatever. Maybe take out some ramp and put in pilots. I don't know. Take out the dreadnought. Um, but you guys work it out. I mean, you guys know what your local meta is. That's what your sideboard should be based on anyway. So watch for some epic, epic gameplay being uploaded next. I'll see you guys next video.